And I think that's why sometimes people think I'm a chameleon. They, yeah. call, me, they call me that too. Yeah. Um, or that I'm lying because they've never seen a woman that wants those things mm -hmm. or that is that way yeah. or that values, you know, a partner who is supportive and encouraging and, you know, masculine and healthy. Mm -hmm. You don't see that anymore online. Yeah. You only see the women who are angry talking about it. No one's really sharing the good things yeah. because it doesn't get views. Yes. And it's crazy. Yeah. And I say all the time on my channel, why do you want someone to like you that doesn't like you? Why do you want to like sad. someone that doesn't like you back? It's sad. It's a two-way street and you should be getting everything back that you're putting in. Mm -hmm. If your time, effort, and energy is not reciprocated, bye-bye. It's how it should be. But it's, it's, it's how it should be, and that's what I'm trying to get guys to focus in on. Mm -hmm. But that one-itis, that obsession, mm -hmm. it's it's so... I, and I, I think, you know where I really believe it comes from? I talked about it before. As you talked about like society and media. Mm -hmm. Because TV makes that story... Yes, you know, that like, there's like the one for you. Yeah, and and not just that, but guy, um, guy meets girl, girl doesn't want guy, guy goes above and beyond and climbs mountains and overcomes demons and slays dragons and all of a sudden happily ever after she realizes that he's the one for her and lived yeah. happy. Like, and he gets her in the end. Yes. When that's not reality. <laughs> Actually, if you do all those things, it will probably make her like you less. Yes. It's, yeah, it's a false sense of reality. Again, media, movies, yes. all of the above. And that's the part where I'm like, well, when we, when guys want to like harp on women in their obsession with fairy tales, I'm like, we as men believe these fairy tales as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, like you doing these things is going to more than likely push her away yeah because now you're you're not zaddy you're a creeper <laughs> you know yeah and it's you know? A, it becomes very obsessive yes i see it all the time in my dms yeah with me sometimes and with guys talking about a girl in their life yeah it's it's crazy yeah so we, the guys are still shooting at you sometimes yeah <laughs> and they know i'm they know they still shoot their shot though so i have to applaud them in a way because i'm like that's bold yeah 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 i like your boldness but at a certain point you have to give it up yeah you have to move on to actually be able to find someone that likes you back yeah instead of wasting all of your time on someone that doesn't yeah and then and then what ends up happening is then they begin to demonize what they once idolized yep you know? And that's why I get hate comments. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> because they've gone after a girl and then they hate all women yeah. because they didn't get what they wanted. Yeah. But they didn't even really know if they wanted that to begin with because you don't mm. even know her. So what are, I hate to lead, lead us here, but what are some of the major criticisms that you're getting from guys that, that like leave some of this un, like hateful messages? <gasps> the don't ask a fish how to catch a fish thing is yeah. a big one. Uh, that I'm lying... I wouldn't lie to you guys. Yeah. I don't have time. What do they feel like you're, that you're lying about, though? I feel like it's just because I, I am sometimes the exception, and I know that. But I always try to express it in a way where I'm talking about multiple different types of girls rather than just myself. Because mm -hmm. I understand that I'm only one person, and not every girl on planet Earth thinks the same way as me. Yeah. And even if you're getting advice from a guy, it doesn't mean that that's going to work for every type of girl either. So the advice really isn't any different. I'm just giving you a woman's perspective that isn't hateful and bitter. <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> no, that's good. Because I think... And like I said, I, I don't want to... I, I don't want to... How can I put this? I don't want to dismiss or discredit what anybody's doing. Yes. I love all the anybody's trying to help men. I'm because a, it's going to help somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even if it helps in one aspect of their life, one person, two people, it's going to help in some way for a lot of people. Yeah. So that's what I love so much about YouTube is that there's so many different influencers to listen to or creators to listen to. Yeah. There's going to be someone that works for you. So yeah. I might not be, you know, a guy's cup of tea that wants to hook up and have sex with a bunch of different girls. That's not my... That's not what I do. Yeah. But I might help a guy that needs a little boost of self-confidence and needs to know what he needs to do to get the woman that he ultimately wants to be with or yeah. the type of woman he wants to be with. Yeah. And so, well, what I'm liking about this episode and most of my content is about accountability. Mm -hmm. I don't blame men. I don't blame women. We both got responsibility. Yep. And I feel as though when what, what, what freed me up in life was... I, I, 
my experiences are, are definitely biased. Besides one girl I dated who I knew I shouldn't have dated her. I've dated, I've, most of the girls I've interacted with were amazing. Like, mm-hmm. literally amazing women. Yeah. But I was able to, di- none of them ever wanted me. <laughs> Besides my girlfriend right now, right? <laughs> but none of them ever wanted me. I was able to disconnect the, the quality of person versus them wanting me. Because mm-hmm. what a lot of guys do, similar to what girls do, and, yeah. w- and w- this is what you're going to notice. When you start listening to what girls complain about, mm-hmm. you just change he for she, and you and see a lot of guys say the same thing. Yep, it's and that's what people you don't realize. You can see both sides. It's and when you're in the middle, like we are, yeah. you can see both sides. Yes, but when you're only on one side, you just point your finger at the other person, 100%. and you don't look at yourself and think about, okay, well, what am I doing? One hundred. Because it's always it's you're right. It's just flip flop back and forth. He she same time. One hundred percent. And so. I remember if if you if you go to some like pro feminist channels mm-hmm. or platforms, you will hear some real horror stories about men. Yeah, some really demonic, evil stuff that will make you get so bitter. Mm-hmm. They'll make you become so frustrated that you would, if all you heard that all day long, yes. you would really despise men. Understandably, yeah. But on the flip side, when you go to some of these extreme red pill channels. Yep. And all you're doing is hearing these stories about women. Yeah. You will grow to really despise and be angry, have so much animosity towards women. Yeah. And so that's why I think it's so important that guys have to fight for balance. They have to fight to hear both sides because you know what's fascinating? What sells on YouTube is negativity. Always. You and I both know five types of women to avoid will do way better than five types of women to marry. Every time. Every time. Yep. So then people see the views. They see the click rate. They just keep posting that negative content. And then the guys are being flooded with negative content. They choose that over your positive sunshine and rainbows video. And then they hate you because they've seen all this negativity all the time. Mm. And it's sad. And I think that's another reason why... I don't care what people say. I will continue to promote the happy, healthy, you know, holding both parties accountable because at the end of the day, that's the only way you win Mm -hmm. is being able to see what you're doing wrong and what the other person is doing wrong and being able to, being willing to change those things about yourself. Yeah. And no no one wants to do that. I I love that point. I want to stay here because that's, that's always my pull. I don't think people understand like what we do here. We could be so much bigger. Yeah. Like people don't like everybody who's doing stuff. We were we we did it before them and we stopped. Yeah. A lot of the shows that are popping up now, we used to do stuff like that. But I realized, oh, this isn't good for guys. Yeah. It's it's detrimental. Yeah. Even my live show. I stopped my live show. Because people were thinking that I was roasting people. Yeah. People were thinking like, oh, yeah, they were going to watch me roast and tell people they're delusion. They were go- like, they were, pe- it's like the gladiator game. Yeah. And I was realized I was bringing a culture of people who just wanted to see carnage. Yeah. I didn't, I don't want that culture. You here. don't want that to be you. You know, you can go somewhere else for that, but exactly. I don't want you to get that from me. Exactly. That's exactly how I feel too. Yeah. And yeah. so what, pe- so I really want the men to realize I will, I will challenge you. Even sometimes I'm guilty of it. So even look at some of the things I'm guilty of. We're I'm, not I'm, perfect. I'm no not perfect. perfect. I got to do a better job of it as well. But go to some of your favorite content creators' pages and look at how much negative, 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 always worst case scenario about yep. women or if you're a woman, about men. Mm-hmm. And so you ask yourself, after consuming hours upon hours of worst case scenario, every psychotic, crazy, delusional, unrealistic woman in this world, how is that now going to shape you into navigating and relating with women today. It's not. It's going to make you do the opposite. You're going to hate women and you're going to be alone forever. Exactly. And then when a person like you or a person like me does content about, hey, there are good women out there. Mm -hmm. Hey, here's what to look for. That's when you have these black pill, these, these, you know, these nihilistic guys who are like, no, you guys are delusional. (laughs) You guys are selling a lie. You're lying to them. Because their hearts are like as black as stone. Yeah. And I get it. I get when you go through things, you're bitter. But if you ever want to be successful in an area of your life, you have to be able to see both sides and to be able to move forward with it instead of 
looking at the negativity all the time yeah. or you're never going to get anywhere. Yeah. It's like all these men who hate women or the men that go their own way, whatever it is. <laughs> I, uh, like I said, the vocab again, mm -hmm. I'm like, I need a book, but um, <laughs> they're always very bitter and no woman is going to want to be with you if you hate them. Same way no man is going to want to be with a woman that hates men. Yeah. That's so silly. I wish guys can see because one of my goals for my show when I was doing my live shows, I wanted women and men to hear each other's stories mm -hmm. because w true story enough, when we started, not intentionally, but when we started on YouTube, we were majority women. Okay. That's yeah. Interesting. We were like majority, like 70% audience were, were, were women. Uh, I'm like 2.4% women. <laughs> so, so majority of our audience was women. And could, because a lot of the interviews we brought were people with majority female audiences. Okay. And then I went on tour with my, my mentor, Stefan, and it was a 27 city tour of dating advice to women. I was a videographer. So I was wow. literally the fly on the wall, probably met like thousands of women. And I heard so many stories. Yeah. And I remember one day, uh, eventually during the second leg of the tour, my mentor let me like be the opening act to the tour. And, and I did a segment called Ask a Man. Mm -hmm. And during the segment called Ask a Man, a woman asked me a question. She was like, there's thousands of girls in this room right now trying to improve um, and, you know, become better women for men. Why is there, why is there not stuff like this for men to attract women? And you're like. And, and I told her, I was like, there is, you just don't know about it. Yeah. There, there's, you don't know about the other side story. You don't know about all these conferences and pick up artistry and all these books and all these YouTube chats. You don't know about what's going on in the other side. Yeah. So I thought it was so important that men and women to be able to come together and hear each other's stories and to see the same things that I'm struggling with mm -hmm. and the same pains I'm going through, you go through as well. There is similarities. And I would argue that sometimes, let me be honest, men is harder. Yeah. But I really wanted to expose men to that so they don't become so cynical and nihilistic. Because like you said, the same way no man wants a bitter woman who thinks all men are this and all men are that. Nope. Why would a woman with options want a guy like that? They don't. Yeah. And the people that are succeeding in their relationships are not watching that kind of content. Yeah. And I don't want to put anybody's content down. Everyone, you know, makes their money their own way and does their own thing. And it gets clicks and views. But it's not, if you want to be in a healthy relationship or have a great partner to spend your life with, that's not the content to be watching. Yeah. Yeah. And know what I've also noticed? Happy women are some of the most quiet women. Yep. Which is why I love what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love your platform, you know, you know, Lord willing, you know, hope you get married and all that good stuff and have the family that you want. But a lot of times, like, let's say. If you didn't get into YouTube space and you were still doing a fashion designer, you get married, you have kids, you're a stay at home mom, maybe doing a little business on the side. Most people will never hear your story. No. And what I what I what I'm trying to let men know is the happiest women are the silent women. Yep. Their, their pages are private on social media. You know, they're they're literally not out and about in the comments. Nope. They're not creating blogs. They're literally happy living their lives. Mm -hmm. So you don't ever hear them. You don't ever see them. Because you think they don't exist. Exactly. <laughs> and I think that's why sometimes people think I'm a chameleon. They call, <laughs> me, they call me that too. Yeah. Um, or that I'm lying because they've never seen a woman that wants those things mm -hmm. or that is that way yeah. or that values, you know, a partner who is supportive and encouraging and, you know, masculine and healthy. Mm -hmm. You don't see that anymore online. Yeah. You only see the women who are angry talking about it. No one's really sharing the good things yeah. because it doesn't get views. Yes. Like if, if you look at every headline, it's always something negative. If it bleeds, it leads. That's what yep. they used to tell us when I was, um, do my community, uh, my journalism major in college. It's true. Yeah. And people click and yeah. people will always click on that. Yeah. I wish it wasn't that way. I wish people would click on positive things too, but yeah. it's why there's all these clickbaity titles and crazy headlines and it's how they get views. Yeah. And that's why for me, I, I'm beyond proud of what we built. I'm really proud of what you built as well Thanks. because there's a shortcut to success and there's a shortcut to money by being negative by bashing the other person by making them look silly by yep. doing all it's just it, it can be done yep and it's easy it's, it's easier you know but there's such an intentionality 
with content. I remember there would be times where back back in like 2018, I would do videos and people would be like, why are you doing those videos? They're boring. Nobody wants to hear them. I'm like, well, they need to hear it though. Yeah. They need you to You need hear to be it. clicking on this one. Yes. <laughs> So I hope if you're finding another video, you find this one too. Exactly. Yeah. But because everyone's mind was like, yo, if you were to do this kind of content, mm -hmm. you would get this amount of views and this amount of attention and your channel will grow so much more. Yep. But it was, no, I have to give men what's best for them. Yep. And, 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 it, and like I said, it's two extremes, right? It's one extreme, which I think people are painting you as, which I think is not fair, mm -hmm. but it's the, the Disney channel fairy tale that all women are angels yeah, no. and all women are princesses and all they need is a right night to swoop her off her feet and live happily ever after. Like that, yeah. we're not teaching that Disney channel fantasy message. No, I know it's bullcrap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> and on the flip side, the other message of nihilism is not it where all women are evil. There's no. no good women. All women want X, Y, and Z. And they're not like, it's not that it's a balance. Yeah. Right? You, you have to meet in the middle somewhere yeah. in order to have a healthy balance of yeah. both. Yeah. Like I said, you got to be able to see both sides yeah. and you have to have empathy and be able to put yourself in someone else's situation and understand, okay, I'm doing something wrong too. Yes. It's the accountability. Accountability. It is all key. comes down to that. Radical accountability. We used to have, we still have it, but we have like five core values on the show mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, about to, I'm doing some revisions because we haven't talked about them in a long time, but like accountability is like number one. Yeah. It's like, I think Jordan Peterson talks about, he says, you know, before you Jordan criticize, Peterson. he's a beast. Before <laughs> you criticize the outside world, make sure your own home is in perfect order. Yeah. And it's the same thing, I think, in the Bible, in, in, in the book of Matthew, Jesus said in, in chapter five or seven, I believe, where he said, before you address the plank in somebody, the speck in someone else's eye, first address the plank in your own. Yeah. So it, li it has to start with how can I improve my life? Yep. And the happiest people are the ones who are doing the self-evaluating and the self-reflecting instead of evaluating what everyone else is doing and judging everyone else. It's liberating. Yep. Accountability is liberating. When you're the victim, when women are the problem, when men are the problem, when society is the problem, then you have no control. No, and it's easy to point fingers. Yes. That's the easy route. Yes. But it's harder to actually look inside and see what you're doing wrong. Exactly. But the beauty is that if I was the one who drove my life into this ditch, I can also be the one that pulls my life out of it. Yep. If I was the one making wrong decisions, leading my, myself in the wrong, if it was because of me, then I can lead myself the right way. Yep. And that's where I feel like the freedom is for accountability. Yeah. And I think people don't realize too, only you can give yourself what you want and what you need in life. Mm -hmm. You can't rely on other people for that or point other people, uh, your finger at other people for that. Yeah which is what everyone wants to do. 